Good to see everybody this morning. And uh, I'm excited about <clears throat> Tom's going to give me something to drink. My throat just got, I guess I just get too excited singing. You know, I just sing too loud. Some people probably appreciate it if I didn't do that. But uh, I enjoy praising God. Amen. Amen. And worshiping the Lord. And sometimes I got to be careful. I got to say my voice a little bit so I can talk. Amen. But uh, last week, we talked about three of the gifts of the Spirit. Can anybody tell? They, they were called revelation gifts. The first three we talked about. Can anybody tell me what the revelation gifts are? The gift of the word of knowledge. Is anybody else listening? No. The gift of the word of wisdom and interpreting. What? Interpreting? Not yet. Oh, okay. The discerning of spirits. Those are revelation gifts. And uh, today we're going to talk about the second set, which are called the power gifts. And they are the gift of faith, the gift of healings, and also the working of miracles. So those are the three we're going to look at today. And before we begin talking about the gift of faith, let me begin by talking about something that's very important. <clears throat> yes, it is good. <laughs> and that is saving faith. So I want to talk about saving faith for just a moment. In Ephesians chapter 2, <clears throat> verses 8 and 9, very familiar verses of Scripture that say, For by grace you have been saved. <clears throat> and this, or you've been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Now that is a, an awesome statement. That really sets Christianity apart from all other religions. And actually, I don't even like to refer to Christianity as a religion because uh, too many people have done that. It's more of a relationship, amen? Yeah. And uh, Jay uh, Frazier shared at our men's breakfast yesterday he talked about relationships and just a great great word and uh, that's what it's about amen it's about relationship one with another and our relationship with him but it goes on to say in romans chapter 12 in verse 3 it says for through grace given to me i say to everyone among you not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think let me just stop there and can I throw something in here for free? It's totally nothing to do with what we're talking about, but I just can't hardly read that to you without saying this. It does not say, don't think of yourselves highly. You know, that's another thing about religion. Religion wants to say, you're just a worm. You know, you're just a dog. You don't, you know, you don't amount to anything. Well, God has a whole different story, amen? The Word of God tells us we're the apple of His eye. So it does not say don't think of yourself highly. It says don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. So what we need to do is find out what God says about us and agree with Him. Amen? Yeah. That's being humble. Humble is not, oh, I'm nothing. I can't do anything. I, you know. No, humble is saying, well, this is what God says about me. So even though I don't feel that way, I'm just going to agree with God and believe it. You know, and if you have this theology, you know, don't get mad. Okay? All you can do is say, I don't agree with that. And that's fine. But then go home and make sure you know why you don't agree with it. Amen? Yeah. But, you know, some have the philosophies, well, you know, we're all just sinners saved by grace. But the Bible that I read tells me that I was a sinner and I was saved by grace. But I'm no longer a sinner. I am now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. 
He made me righteous. It's called the gift of righteousness. And I received that gift. Now I am righteous. And sometimes that's hard to say, isn't it? But you've got to realize you're saying it because of what He did and not anything that you did. Amen. For by grace are you saved through faith. You need to believe it. Amen? Amen. So, don't start putting yourself down. You hurt God's feelings when you do that. Amen? Don't put yourself down. Just agree with God and what He says about you. And that is having a humble spirit. Anybody ever been to a foot washing? You know, we, that's not something we necessarily practice here, but I've, I've had that done before, and that's a humbling experience, isn't it? I mean, to have the one, to be the one that your foot is being washed, or your feet's being washed. And, you know, I mean, I'd rather wash somebody else's feet than have them wash my feet. But it's a humbling experience. But that's kind of the same idea. You know, we're, we're just agreeing with what God has done for us, and we're accepting that and receiving that. Okay, back to the subject on hand. Here's the part I want you to see right here. Uh, at the, the last part of verse 3, Romans 12. As God has allotted to each a measure of faith. Now some translate that with the article the, which there's a whole other story, but for the purposes that we're looking at today, you can either call it a measure of faith or the measure of faith. Now, we understand that God has given everyone a measure of faith. And that's why you can be saved. Because God's given you a measure of faith to believe. Now, <clears throat> we're saved through faith, and God has given us the faith to be saved. We're saved, it says, by grace. And listen, God has given us the grace to be saved. And since God has both given us the faith and the grace, we can't boast. Amen? It's, it's none of our doing except we accept it. We accept what He's done for us. We're saved by grace that only God can provide. Now God's given us all a measure of faith. Now here's, here's what I want us to look at just for a moment. He's given us a measure of faith, but we can develop that faith. He's given us all a measure of faith, but we can do something with that faith. We can develop that faith, and we can do it in three different ways. In Romans 10, 17, it says, So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. As we meditate on the Word of God, and as we read the Word of God, as we hear the Word of God, that develops our faith. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now, that principle can also work in the negative. If all you talk is fear and all you hear is fear, fear will come by faith too. It's just reading a different report. Actually, in the Greek, that says faith coming by report, and that report comes from God. And then there's another uh, scripture that says, whose report will you believe? You see, we, we, we need to learn to trust and believe in the report of God rather than the report of the world or even our own report or the report of our friends. Oh, I, I, I know somebody that had that and they, they died. Well, bless God. You know, hopefully they're in heaven, but I'm going to believe the report of God. I'm going to believe to live, amen? amen, and not die. So we've got to be careful what we listen to. And secondly, our faith develops by exercising our faith. You know, if everything is hunky-dory in your life, that's wonderful. Use your faith for somebody else. Amen? Usually there's enough in our own life to keep us busy. But you know, if everything's going great, then go out and start believing God for somebody else. Yeah. Well, do that anyway. Amen? That way you're not focusing so much on your problem when you're helping somebody else with theirs. But exercising your faith. You know, faith is really like a muscle. If... if uh, if, if you exercise your muscle, it's the same muscle that just gets bigger and more mass. Amen? And, uh, I mean, I'd like to show you these muscles, but I'd intimidate some of you guys. <laughs> but, uh, of course, talking about my muscle goes to the third thing, and that is, or actually the same thing, exercising faith. You know, I haven't been to the gym in a while. So, you know, it's time to get back into the gym so I can start getting a little bit around instead of flat right there and, 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 and build that muscle up. 
But in our faith, we exercise our faith. We build our faith by exercising it. And then, uh, you know, another point about faith as far as exercising, it, the old saying goes, uh, use it or lose it. You know, so if you're not using your faith, all of a sudden you'll find you're not really believing like you used to believe for different things and, and miracles and whatever it may be. So we need to use our faith, exercise our faith. Then the third thing is spending time with the Lord. You know, the better you know someone, the more you trust them if they're trustworthy. And Jesus is trustworthy, amen? Yeah. So the more time you spend with Him, the, the, the more you're going to trust Him in matters of life. You know, it does. It, it get to where it, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Yeah, I did a series one time. It's been a long time ago. That was called Instrument Rated, and basically, I use the illustration of how a pilot, before they can get certified in certain ways, they have to be instrument rated. And simply, what that means is this: they have to learn to trust their instruments more than what they feel or see, because you can get what's called vertigo. And you may think you're going straight, and you may be going straight down. And you have to overcome what you feel and trust what the instrument says. The instrument says, I'm going straight down, so I better, even though I feel like I'm going straight out, I better adjust my instruments so that I'm doing what the instrument panel's telling me to do. That kind of goes with that scripture, we walk by faith and not by sight, amen? And we need to learn to trust the instrument panel. And church, what is our instrument panel? The Word of God. Yeah, it's right here. We learn to trust our instrument panel more than our own feelings. What does God say about it? And stand upon the promises in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Now, as we have talked about faith, as far as saving faith and, and developing our faith, we have at least a part to play in developing our faith by exercising, by hearing the Word, uh, by spending time with the Lord. We can develop our faith by, by us doing those things. That's something that we can do. Amen? But when we talk about the gift of faith, that is a time that it goes beyond us. It's beyond anything that we can do. You know, we might have faith uh, for someone's headache to go away, but scared to, to pray for somebody to get out of a wheelchair. Can anybody relate to that? It's the same God. Amen. I remember back when I was about 19 years old or 20. Uh, I've only been saved a year or two. I lived in Florida. I started hearing uh, uh, the message of, of faith. And I remember the first time I experienced a healing by just believing like that. I had a terrible headache. And so I did this. I said, Hey, in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave me. Nothing happened. And I said, I said, Hey, in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave me. And all of a sudden, that headache just went away. I'm like, Woo! That's awesome. That's awesome. And and, and I, over the years, I've seen that. And I've seen many other. I, I've actually seen a man raised from the dead. Now, not out of the grave, but he was brain dead, had been brain dead for several days. And, and they were saying, you know, you need to unhook him. And the wife wouldn't do it. I mean, I didn't instruct her one way or the other what to do, but she just wouldn't let go. And uh, I went to his bedside every day. And I just said, in the name of Jesus, I speak life. I speak health and healing in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And like three days later, he rose up out of the bed and started joking around with the nurses. I mean, that ain't a faith booster. <laughs> that was the first church I ever pastored. I was just silly enough to believe the Word of God. There you go. You know? Now, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I'm not, you know, I hate to tell you this, but, you know, my faith has waxed and waned over the years. You know, I haven't gone to everybody that's dead or brain dead and said, in Jesus' name, get up. But I just believe God for that. and I mean, there's other people praying, but I know it was my prayer that did it. I mean, if you don't believe it's your prayer, don't pray. Amen? I mean, when we pray, we're pray believing. And uh, so anyway, I prayed for him. And uh, 
But, but when you talk about, and I don't necessarily believe that was a gift of faith, because I'll just believe in every day. But when you talk about the gift of faith, a good example might be you feel compelled to tell somebody to get up out of that wheelchair and walk, and you just know what's going to happen. It's beyond you. You just know that when you do it, it's going to happen. Now, I know I've, I've used this illustration quite a few times and don't mean to wear it out. And there's other illustrations I could use, but this is probably the best. And since the Haney's were just here, let me use it one more time, okay? But when I went to Wisconsin uh, to pastor a church there, uh, you, most of you heard the story as Chris told it when, when they were here. Uh, she had just had a major surgery. It didn't look good. She was in a lot of pain. They said it's going to take weeks and weeks to recover. And uh, they called me over to pray for her because she was in so much pain. And uh, she couldn't sleep. And so I go over there. And I go into the bedroom there. And, and, uh, and, and I start praying for her. And all of a sudden, I just heard myself saying, you're going to sleep like a baby tonight. And when you wake up in the morning, you're going to be completely healed. And I left. And I got outside and go, what did I just say? <laughs> you know, and but she woke up in the morning, slept like a baby, came to church, no pain, completely healed. She's been telling that testimony for you know, 10 years or however long it's been now, 10 years or older. And that was a gift of faith. Though. I tell you, that was beyond my faith. It's just God, the Holy Spirit placed that in, in me at that moment. And it was like I was telling her that, wasn't even thinking about it. You see, that's the gift of faith. When it's beyond you. It's beyond your confidence. But yet you have a confidence that it's going to happen. So that's kind of the gift of faith. Then we have the gifts of healing. And let me just say this. I am sensing that God wants to use crosswalk fellowship to bring healing. Now, up until this time, it's been more of an emotional healing, a spiritual healing. And, you know, a lot of folks that have come here have been, have been hurt in church. And uh, God, I believe, has used this as, as, as a resting place and a safe place. But, in addition to that, or matter, let me just say this first. Our, our slogan, if you want to call it that, is a church that loves you right where you are, a healing place. So we advertise that. And I always say, if you're going to advertise something, you need to live up to it. I mean, I, I've been to uh, Friendship, and I'm just making names up, okay? So if you know these churches, I'm not talking about that particular church. But Friendship Baptist Church. Well, if you go to Friendship Baptist Church, they, they better be friendly. Amen. I mean, if they're calling themselves Friendship Baptist Church. Or Agape Chapel. Well, if you go to Agape Chapel, they better show some love. Amen? Or Faith Baptist Church. I'm saying Baptist. I was raised Baptist. But, you know, whatever it may be, well, then they, they ought to be a people of faith. Amen? So, um, you know, we got an easy one. We're Crosswalk Fellowship, so we, we fellowship. Amen? <laughs> but beyond that, it, 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 what we say we are... Uh, a church that loves you right where you are, that we need to practice that. Amen? We need to practice loving people right where they are. Now, what we don't tell them is we love you too much to leave you there. That's what Jesus says about us. Amen? And uh, we want to help disciple you and, and take you further in your walk with God. And uh, uh, but, but, but a healing place. If we're going to advertise we're a healing place, then, then, then we need to exhibit that. I just thank God that in eight years of ministry at Crosswalk Fellowship, you know... It has been a healing place. It has been a safe place. Now, there's never been any kind of uh, vicious word spoken that I know of anyway. Uh, you know, it's always been an encouragement and edification one for another. So, I getting back to the gifts of healing. I feel that God wants us to move us over to the realm of physical healing as well. That's why I'm starting to give opportunity during worship. Say, if you want to come up for prayer, we want to pray for you. I mean, it's not that we haven't done that, but we want to spotlight that. We want to say, hey, look, this is an opportunity to believe God together to meet not only your emotional need, your spiritual need, but your physical need as well. As, as we agree together and believe together for, for your body to be touched and 
healing manifested in your body. In time, I want to develop uh, like prayer teams where I won't be the one standing up here, but we'll have maybe a couple standing up here and praying for people. But, but you know, we've got to break that barrier where the law is going to get up and go up front. We've got to remember we're family, amen? There's no reason to be scared. There's no reason to be nervous about walking up front and being prayed for. That's a natural thing for supernatural things to happen, amen? We just get up and and, uh, and just don't worry about what people might think. I mean, I'll, I don't know about you, but I know you. <laughs> and I know what you'll think. Praise God. I'm just believing God with them too. That their need will be met. That, that's all that we're thinking. And uh, I want to see that happen. And, and when we pray for one another, it says that we'll recover. Amen. And I want to believe God and see His healing power manifest in each of us. Now, we don't have to have the gift of healing to pray for people, to see people receive healing. The Word of God instructs us to pray one for another. Amen? The Word of God instructs us to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Uh, healing is part of the Word of God. However, you may be praying for somebody while you're praying, the Holy Spirit will give you the gifts of healing. Or all of a sudden, man, you're just a supernatural faith comes on you. You know, it's just a, a, that gift of healing comes on you. I mean, I, I remember times, this is kind of funny. Because this has been, I'm talking several years back. But, you know, we used to have people, you know, we'd, we'd go up front and pray for people. I wasn't even, I was on staff at this time, actually. And uh, people come up and I'd be praying for them. I feel electricity. I just feel electricity in my hands. And I don't know why, but somehow that just gives you an extra measure of faith. You know, I guess we're, we're sense related in a lot of ways. And and when I pray, I feel that electricity, and all of a sudden, I just know, hey, you're going to get healed because I feel electricity. You know, and I went to talk to someone that, that God was using really big in, in the church, uh, Randy Clark. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Randy, but it's been years ago. But I was at a meeting, I started talking to him. I said, you know, I just want to pray for that electricity to come back because I, I, I wasn't feeling that electricity. I said, and I told him that. He goes, I never feel anything. <laughs> and so you don't have to feel anything, amen. Uh, just believe God. But but whenever whenever that supernatural gifts of healing comes on you, uh, there's there's no effort whatsoever. I mean, you just know that it's going to happen. Okay. I just want to ask you this question. Do you desire the gift of healing? The Bible tells us to, amen? The Bible tells us to desire the gifts, but especially to prophesy what it says. It says desire the gift. There's nothing wrong with desiring the gifts. Outside of people getting saved, I believe God wants for His people to be healed. Matter of fact, Jesus, it tells us, had compassion on them and healed them all. And I, I don't believe Jesus has changed his mind. I believe Jesus still has compassion. And I believe that Jesus still wants to heal everyone. Let's stir up the gift of healing that is in us. Let's be courageous and speak God's Word. Let's lay hands on one another and believe God for His healing power to manifest. Do you believe that's what God wants? I believe that's what He wants. And one more note I want to share on, on this gift. I've been saying the gift of healing is actually literally the gifts of healing. It's plural. And what that simply means is there are different kinds of healings the Lord wants to do through us. Now, while God can use any of us at any time, He does use some folks, some believers on a regular basis for that gift of flow through. 
You know, I mean, it can blow right now. It can blow through any one of us. But God sometimes uses certain individuals to flow in that gift through them. And even with those that He uses, sometimes there's a particular gift of healing that they are used to manifest. And so what, like this person may be known for people with cancer. And God just uses them through the gifts of healing to touch people and, and see them healed of cancer. Or it might be, you know, crippled legs. I remember a church on two word, uh, word of Faith Christian Center in Bradenton, Florida, many, many years ago. And there was a teenage girl there that her legs were crippled. And people get up and pray for her every week, and she, you know, walked back still, you know, crippled. And then one day she went up there, and we were praying for her, and her legs straightened up. You want to talk about a place coming unglued? I tell you, there's just something about witnessing a miracle like that. But you know, we limit ourselves by our doubt and unbelief. In third world countries, they see way more miracles than we do here in the United States. Matter of fact, I know of a youth pastor one time that went up to, uh, I can't remember, it was Africa or somewhere like that. And they were praying for someone and they were blind and their eyes opened. And he says, we were more surprised than they were. <laughs> You know, we, we limit ourselves sometimes by our own doubt and unbelief. Hallelujah. If you, desire, if you desire the Lord to use you to manifest the gift of healing, His healing power, just ask Him. Just open yourself up to be available for Him to use. I remember back was while still in Florida. Uh, God used me. It's kind of a different type of manifestation, but He used me to bring deliverance to people from smoking cigarettes. People, if they smoke, I'll say, "Do you want to smoke?" Because you know a lot of people smoke want to quit, and you know. The smoking sin, well, you know, it's it's hurting your body, just like overeating is hurting your body, and it's, it, at the very least, it's not being a good steward of your body. Amen. I think anybody that smokes would even say that. You know, it's not being. I mean, it says right there on the cigarette pack, "This can kill you." Now, so back then, I would say, "You will quit smoking." So let me pray for you. You quit smoking. And I'd pray for them and they would quit. I mean, it would just, it, it happened like that for over a year. It's everywhere, you know, hey, you want to, okay. So I believe there was just a manifestation there that God used me for that particular time to do that. I have a great book written by T.L. Osborne. Anybody know who that is? T.L. Osborne? Uh, it's called Healing the Sick. And back in the day, I read that so much it literally has fallen apart. I had to buy a new book. And uh, so I'm hoping to read it again and let it fall apart. But basically, it's just testimony after testimony after testimony of, of how God heals people, how He heals the sick. But you know, it shouldn't surprise us because the Bible tells us He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay, then the last one we're going to look at very quickly is the working of miracles. You know, I have said for years that all healing is from God. All healing is from God. You know, the very best is divine health. Amen? Amen. And that's what we should believe for. Just never get sick. Just never get sick. Just believe for it. Believe for divine health. If you do get sick, I believe God's second best is miracles. Just, now you're sick, now you're not. Just believe, you know, they for a mirror. And then behind that is divine healing. And the difference there is sometimes divine healing doesn't happen instantly. I, I've experienced divine healing uh, on several occasions. I won't, you've heard the story, so I won't go into detail on them. But uh, I got shingles one time. Anybody had shingles? It's pretty painful. 
And, uh, and I was praying, praying. I, you heard me tell the story. You know, when I wake up in the morning, to be gone. Well, it's still there. When I wake up in the morning, to be gone. But I just kept believing, kept believing. And uh, I went uh, to a, a revival service, and they prayed for me. It went away. You know, I told the story. I just felt like warm oil going over my body. And as it did, the pain just went away. Went back to my seat. Half hour later, the pain started coming back. And I just said, in Jesus' name, in the morning, it will not be here. Well, that morning is gone, never came back. Praise God. You see. Uh, and, you know, that's sometimes that's the way divine healing works. As you do, you just keep standing on the promise and you just keep believing God and don't give up. I said, sometimes it's a battle, but, but I refuse to give up. You know, I refuse to give up. It may take a week, it may take a month, but I'm not going to say, oh, well, this is the way it's going to be. I'm just going to keep on plugging. You know, I had arthritis in my hands one time, so bad, so bad. It was painful. I, mean, I couldn't use my hands sometimes. I just kept praying and standing on the promises of God. And long story short, one day, pain just went away. I went to uh, my rheumatologist in Nashville. And he said, well, maybe you're going now, but it'll come back. And I want you to know, talk about the power of words. On my way home, my pain came back in my hands. And again, I said, in Jesus' name, I do not receive this. And the pain went away, and I never had that kind of pain again. Praise God. I just say this to encourage you. Maybe you've been battling with something. Don't give up. Amen? Just keep standing on the Word. Ask people to agree with you. And, and just don't give in. I mean, if you take medicine, that's fine. That's not going to keep you from getting healed. Just keep hanging in there. When we talk about the working of miracles... I looked up a Bible dictionary uh, definitions of miracles, and here's what I got. An intervention in the natural universe by God. A phenomena that transcends natural law. A divine act by which God reveals Himself to people. Now, I didn't finish my, my, my other part first. Let me back up just a moment. I said there's divine healing. Second, you know, first, divine health, miracles, divine healing. Then there's medicine. I believe God gave us medicine. Amen. I used to know one lady. And then there's doctors and surgery. I knew one lady years ago. She used to listen to the radio ministry I had at the time. She did not believe in going to a doctor. She just would not go to a doctor. She had this thing growing on her nose. And all she had to do is go get that thing clipped. But she would not go to a doctor. I tried at first. I said, you know, why don't you just go to the doctor and we'll pray for you. And you believe in doctors? <laughs> I said, well, yeah. But I just kind of quit talking about it because she was losing all faith. So I just prayed for her, believed God with her. And I tell you what, many times God touched her in many ways. Her and her sister. So all healings from God. You know, even when you have surgery, God's created our bodies in such a way that healing comes about. So going back to some Bible uh, definition of miracles, what we're talking about right now. An intervention in the natural universe by God, a phenomenon that transcends natural law, a divine act by which God reveals Himself to people. Now, I want to close just with a few examples because I don't think it really takes a lot to know what a miracle is. Uh, Jesus and the apostles healing the sick and casting out devils. I think that's kind of a supernatural thing. Um, Jesus turning water into wine at the wedding of Cana. I believe that's pretty much a miracle. Jesus feeding 5,000 people by multiplying five loaves of bread and two fish. We'll try to do that in the natural. Don't think it's going to happen. God parting the Red Sea by, for Moses and the children of Israel to, to cross over. We'll see if you can do that outside of a miracle. Daniel not being eaten by lions. When he was in the lion's den. We'll give that a try and see how it works for you. Peter walking on water. If you try that outside of a miracle, you're going to get wet. Amen? So the Bible's full of miracles. From Genesis to Revelations. And God is still doing miracles and He wants to do them through us. He is still a miracle-working God. Let's not limit Him. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah.
If you feel the Holy Spirit tugging at your spirit to perform a miracle through you, just be willing and let Him. Step out, be bold, and believe God for a miracle. And I'll just close with this. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen. Would you say that with me? Nothing is impossible with God. Now I want you to say it like you mean it. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your miracle working power. Lord, we just uh, ask that you would help us to look beyond our, our natural senses, to remember that you are a supernatural God and that you do supernatural things. And Father, if there be those uh, present this morning that need healing, need a miracle, whatever it may be, Lord, we just agree for your power to be manifested in their lives. And we give you the glory. I wonder why I look up at me here. Man, I want to say this very quickly. The greatest miracle of all is the miracle of salvation. The transforming of a life. The changing direction from going to an eternity in hell to an eternity in heaven. That's the greatest miracle of all. And if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can receive that miracle today. Amen? How do you do it? By saying yes to Jesus. And, uh, I, you know, I do this in different ways at different times. But I just feel led to do it this way today. If you are not sure that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ and you would like to be sure today... Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm not going to ask nobody to bow your heads today. I'm not going to ask you to close your eyes. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Amen? Nothing to be ashamed of. Paul said, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. I'm simply going to ask you to do this. If that's you this morning, I'm not asking if you've been coming to church. I'm not asking you anything like I'm not asking if you've been baptized or... Whatever, I'm asking you, do you know that you have a relationship with Jesus? If you don't know that, you can know it today. I guarantee it. You can know it today. I guarantee it by the Word of God. I'm just going to ask you to just lift your hand up and say, that's me. Or you don't have to say, that's me. Just lift your hand up. And I'm going to pray. And you can leave here knowing today that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Would it be anybody? I know it takes boldness. But I'm going to ask you, anybody at all? All right. The reason I say it doesn't matter if you've been in church all your life or, or whatever, and I've, I've used this illustration over here. The first church I pastored, there was a gentleman in that church. Man, he was my right hand man. He was almost like a mic. You know, I mean, just always there for me and just helpful. One day he got up and walked up to the front. So I'm like, hey, Charlie, how can I pray for you? He goes, I need to accept Christ. Okay. <laughs> You see, it doesn't matter how good of a person you are. It doesn't matter how involved you are in the church. What matters is, do you know that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? You know, we got to remember, uh, God's time is, I mean, God's time for healing us was 2,000 years ago. Amen. He already paid the price. <coughs> Try it. He's just waiting on us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In closing, Sometimes I just don't want to close. In closing, I want to just remind you uh, of our special service coming up on August 31st. Everybody say 31st. 31st. Whenever I put that in the worship folder, originally I was looking at July's calendar and it was the last Sunday and I put it on 28th. But it's the 31st. We have a great brother coming to uh, minister. Uh, you'll see in your worship folder, Brother Marvin Hightower, uh, friend of mine from down south uh, in Madisonville, Kentucky. Uh, I think you do not want to miss this service. He, For one thing, uh, he's just an anointed singer and musician. Uh, he's a powerful preacher. And uh, he also moves in the gifts, and especially in the prophetic. And uh, I believe that God has a word for us. Amen. And I know you're going to enjoy his ministry when he comes. So uh, We're going to be touching all the bases. 
on uh, August 31st in our morning service. So uh, not only uh, plan to be here yourself, but and, and invite some folks. Amen. Uh, I did realize afterwards it's Labor Day weekend, so hopefully you don't have plans, but uh, they, uh, they can be changed. Uh, I'd encourage being here if at all possible. And uh, we're going to have a great time together. And I, I know you're going to enjoy it. Again, invite some folks. Say, hey, you know, I've been asking you to come to church for three years now. This would be a good Sunday to come. Pastor's not preaching. So. <laughs> but uh, and then invite some people. Let's get a full house and uh, let's have a great Sunday. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. And we'll see you next time.